Hi, it's Laura at Lawrence Branch, and I'm sharing with you some library resources to celebrate 25 years of Pokemon. Catching Creatures for 25 Years. This article comes from The Week, Junior Edition, February 26th. The games were popular, but the Pokemon franchise quickly grew to include a card game, comics, books, movies, and a TV show. Over the past 25 years, there have been 22 animated movies, 58 volumes of the main comic series, Pokemon Adventures, dozens of chapter books, and even more sketchbooks, coloring books, journals, and guides that will teach you everything you need to know about the world of pocket monsters. Ever wondered why the Pokemon theme song is so catchy? You should ask someone who reads poets like Wordsworth and Coleridge. So says um, the author of the article, the Pokemon theme song owes its catchiness to famous romantic poetry, and that is in Gamer Magazine, uh, published March 1st, 2021. Look it up uh, to read the whole article. Um, but interestingly, he says, if you're reading this article, there's a pretty good chance you know the words to the original Pokemon theme song. I want to be the very best like no one ever was. There's a reason why it's still so catchy to this day. It's written in common meter, also known as ballad meter. This is a literary device that appears in some of the most famous and prestigious poems ever written. What this means is that you can take the iconic romantic poems that were published in 1798 and sing them to the tune of Pokemon theme song. Seriously. And it goes on. Go ahead and give that article a look. And I'm excerpting from this article that I got from Press Reader in Borneo News. Pokemon is inspired by the childhood tradition of collecting bugs, popular during Japan's hot and humid summer holidays, and part of its enduring appeal is its simple goal to catch them all. Hundreds of round-eyed pocket monsters inspired by everything from mice to dragons can be caught and trained to full strength in battles. The winning concept has sold countless toys, film tickets, and more than 30 billion Pokemon cards since the first black and white Game Boy titles were released in Japan in 1996. Atsuko Nishida, who designed the electric mouse Pikachu, once said she modeled it on a round Japanese suite called Daifuku. Her fellow designers, who had asked Nishida to draw a cute monster, liked the creature and urged her to, urged her to make it even more adorable. I thought it would be nice to have it store electricity in its cheek pouches. At the time, I was really into squirrels, which store food in their cheeks, she told a Japanese newspaper. The character's signature pronouncement, Pika Pika, meaning shiny and sparkly in Japanese, only added to the bright yellow creature's power of attraction. This article came from Academic Search Premier. Don't forget to check the library's virtual branch for full text articles. And by the way, throughout this video, you've noticed that list of books and resources that's been scrolling. Um, it has not repeated yet. These are all of the things that you can get at the Mercer County Library. Also indexed in EBSCO, I found the reference to this article, uh, Pokemon Goes in a New Direction with Open World Video Game, and that came from NPR, and you could go there to listen to that. It ends with this line, Pokemon is a global media empire. It's fair to say that whatever does happen with this bigger and more ambitious game, the Pokeball will keep on rolling. Thanks for listening, everybody. When this um, list of books stops, I'm going to uh, show you a list of things that you can get electronically on our virtual branch using Hoopla. So there's a ton. Uh, we as librarians have been replacing worn copies of Pokemon books and materials over the years, and we know it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.